hey ladies welcome back to my channel as you can tell by the caption of the video today we're going to be doing a french tip tutorial and this is going to be on a fill-in so it's going to be a little bit different from a full set essentially it's all the same we just have a few different steps so yeah we're going to go ahead and go ahead and get into the tutorial make sure to comment like and subscribe and yeah let's hop right into it so as you can see i started by pushing my clients cuticles back and that's super important because we want to make sure that we are getting all of that new growth exposed and ready to fill that in and here i'm just taking my coarse drill bit and i am filing off all of that old polish you do want to be careful when using this well any drill bit honestly but especially this drill bit because it is super sharp and coarse like i said so if you are not careful you could potentially nick your client or you especially with it going at a higher speed to get this polish off um you just want to be mindful of that and making sure that you are constantly keeping that drill moving and paying attention to the speed and you know where you're moving it xyz so now that we have all of that off i'm going to go ahead and go in with my 180 sanding band and this is just to remove all of the natural shine from any of the new growth nail as you can see i'm also taking the file and going underneath the crescent of the nail which is just like the free edge the tip um, and I just like to do that because I do it when I shape, but I also do it in the beginning just to kind of regain some of that shape. As you can see, the shape after a while does just kind of start to doll out. So I just like to do that that way when I do get to the end and it's time for me to shape. I do have a little bit less of cleaning up to do. If I already have the file out, why not do it? But yeah, so that's totally optional you don't have to do that that's just something that i do personally and so like i said um this is just to remove those natural shine that natural shine from the nails and that is what will prevent the acrylic from adhering to the nail properly so you do want to make sure that you are getting rid of all of the shine you don't have to apply any pressure when doing this you do not need to have the drill up at a super high speed you're just simply running it across the new growth and the you know area of where the old nail left off at and just filing that down a little bit getting rid of all the natural oils and you're going to be good to go i do like to remind people to make sure to let your client know after the prep is done and during the prep especially because i need to throw that in there please don't touch nothing it can and will affect the outcome of your set so just after you do all the prep and during the prep tell them girl keep your hands on this desk period but now we're going to go in with my mia secret dehydrator and this is just another layer like another protection step i guess you can call it i don't know the right word but just another way to get rid of those natural oils for sure and then this is the mia secret extra bond and this is just something that you apply right after to help the acrylic adhere to the nails properly it's a primer so these two steps are super super important and i don't show it but i always say in my videos i do use two coats of the extra bond that's totally optional but that's just what i choose to do personally so now that we have that done we are done with the prep and we are ready to move on to the filling part so as you can see i just picked up one bead and placed it right below the cuticle area so this is basically just like a full set the only difference is instead of building up the whole nail you're just placing multiple cuticle beads so fill-ins are great ways to kind of get used to and practice placing those cuticle beads um if you're not used to them or you're somebody that struggles with them this is all you're really doing in a fill-in so you're definitely gonna get some practice here um you do want to make sure that you're not placing it right at the cuticle or on the cuticle because that will cause flooding the acrylic will get on the skin and if it's left there, it will be uncomfortable to your client and definitely we're 100% sure, for sure cause lifting. So you just wanna make sure that you are keeping all of the skin and the cuticle area free from acrylic. If you do happen to get some on your client's skin or if it does start to seep out, flood, whatever, it's no big deal. Just take your brush as soon as you catch it and wipe around. Honestly, even if I know that there's no acrylic on my client, I or like you know flooding the cuticle area even if I know the acrylic is where it needs to be I still just 
out of force to habit rather be safe than sorry i still take my brush and just wipe around my client's cuticle area and just make sure that everything is nice and clean and i think like i said it's just better to be safe than sorry it's such a struggle such a hassle to get that off once the acrylic is already dry so it's better to just go ahead and clean it up now while you can and then avoid it yeah as you can see here i'm just it's just a force to have but i do it every nail no matter what so the reason i say if you're wondering to place the acrylic um bead the cuticle bead right underneath the cuticle rather than at or on obviously not on because that will get it on the skin but the reason you want to place it right at the cuticle or like right on top is because when you start to feather the acrylic down it will kind of push up just a little bit and it'll fall right into where you need it to be considering that the cuticle area usually de i mean depending on where you your when your client is coming it doesn't really need much acrylic so you don't want to put a super big bead and then just place it and now you just have a super lumpy cuticle area and you don't really need to build anything up per se so you do like like i said placing it right underneath the cuticle and feathering it down will build on to the previous apex making it you know nice and strong keeping it nice and strong i should say and then of course filling in the cuticle area and that is the most important part here as you can see i'm also making sure to wipe the sides and the free edge of the nail and that is just to really help regain the shape um obviously i do still have to file afterwards but that's just something that i do to kind of help along the way it cuts down a little bit of time just because when i get the filing i don't have a lot of extra structure to you know rebuild it's just cleaning up the shape and i do say feathering the acrylic only because that's like super i don't really know if that's the best way for y'all to understand like if that's the best term to use but basically you just want to work really lightly when you are feathering when you're you know applying the acrylic working with the acrylic the reason i say that is because if you work too heavy handed or if you like apply pressure if you press into the acrylic whatever it can get clogged in your brush which is such a hassle and it could potentially just be taken off a lot of your product which is you know a waste of product a waste of time so you just want to work lightly go ahead and you know like i said making sure that you're feathering it down and um that way you're not wasting any time or product and as you can see i'm making sure to wipe my brush keeping it nice and clean and free from any excess acrylics if you do happen to get acrylic in your brush i know that they do sell brush cleaner me personally feel like that doesn't work some of y'all techs swear by it i like to just let my brush which people are so against this but what works for you might not work for everybody else and vice versa um I personally like to let my brush soak in acetone for five minutes after I do each and every set. And then, um, you know, of course I clean it off, make sure that it's free of all acrylics, dry it up. And then I do put it back in my monomer just to like condition it. And that's just to make sure that it doesn't be, you know, it doesn't stay super dry, especially if I am done for the day or week or whatever. Um, it lets my brush stay like, nice and conditioned nice and soft and um i just you know pinch it back into shape well most people just say flatten it out but that's what i say and then i put it back so um i have gotten acrylic stuck in my brush multiple times i still do to this day and it's, sometimes it's not even you it just happens to be the acrylic that you're working with it could be something wrong with your monomer there's a lot of reasons that this could happen um so don't always just jump to you and thinking that it's your skill because sometimes it's not like i said i've been doing nails for five years and i still have that problem and that's how i clean my nails and it works for me every time so or not my nails oh, lord that is how i clean my brush and it works for me every time so yeah but anyways yeah it's really nothing much to the acrylic part you just want to make sure that you're staying nice and clean you want to make sure that you are filling in that cuticle area you don't want it to be too thin you don't want it to be too thick and you want to make sure that you're taking it all the way to the cuticle and i say that not placing it but when you go to feather it down and when you are done filling it in you want to make sure that you're double checking and that it looks completely filled in you want it to look super nice and flush with your client's cuticle as if it grew right out that cuticle and that's the same for like a fill-in or a full set you just want to make sure that it looks nice and neat 
and clean and if you feel like you need to add more acrylic in by all means definitely do so because you don't want your client to have you know gaps or pieces falling off you don't want um it to look like she is just got a feeling but already needs to come back in a week yeah so just be mindful of that and you also want to make sure that you're checking the sides of your client's nails um, I have clients that come back pretty, you know, like every two weeks, like they stay on top of it, um, or that's just what they want to do. And normally those clients are the ones who I don't really have the issue with, like on the sides of their nails. It's more so I do have clients that, you know, my nails do last a month or more. So sometimes they come once a month and I notice that the sides of their nails are kind of the acrylic is starting to chip away just from all the wear and tear. So I do make sure that I check that on each and every nail as I'm filling it in in case I need to one add more acrylic to you know kind of build it up and repair it or two if it needs to be completely replaced. So just be mindful of that and make sure that with every fill in you are you know analyzing the nails and seeing you know from a nail tech's point of view what person what shape they're in um and what i mean by shape is like sometimes my clients will come and i'll let them know yeah girl i think that you can have these on for about one or two more sets um i might sell them next time we need to do a full set it really just depends and you as a nail tech will know just by the condition of them looking at them and then knowing your client and you know how rough they are or aren't on their nails and how frequently they get their nail serviced so that's why I said it kind of just depends on a lot of different factors but definitely just try to keep your client in the loop so they can know because it is no fun when who we I don't have a lot of times where clients will come and they need a full set and I don't have time for a full set and they didn't know they needed a full set and I kind of knew but I forgot to tell them and it just is a mess or they don't have the money to pay for it but baby this filling is not about to be a filling it has to, it's gonna have to be a full set because these nails are so raggedy not even raggedy let me stop being dramatic just because they're run down which happens they're not concrete it's just acrylic so like i said just kind of pay attention it, your clients will definitely appreciate it so here i am just regaining that shape cleaning them up a little bit um i do we're keeping the square shape so i'm just going to file the sides of the nail at a 90 degree angle but you want to make sure that you are pulling your client's skin back um this is a 80 grit file so it is very very sharp as most nail files are but especially this one so you want to make sure that yeah you're pulling the client's skin back and when you're filing you want to keep the file pressed straight up against the nail flat um, back of file to nail and just file it straight up and down um, you don't have to go too crazy right here as you can see I'm just kind of filing it a little bit from each side making sure to analyze it just getting it nice and clean um, I the reason I say that or I mentioned that is because when I was a beginner I used to file like crazy I used to just pick a side file 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 go to the other side file 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 and come back and look at it and I'm like wait a minute this don't went from square to coffin or from coffin to I don't know what barely any nails so just being mindful you don't want to go too crazy especially with the filling because with the filling you already have the shape you're just cleaning up any of that extra acrylic that may have gotten on the sides and also um if you know they it's been a while sometimes that shape can get a little wonky so you just want to make sure that you're cleaning it up and bringing it back to that crisp clean shape as far as the free edge as you can see same thing just filing it um, straight up and down at a 90 degree angle and ain't nobody got no measuring tape out to really measure these angles so maybe I should probably stop saying it like that because some people might be like what is a 90 degree angle which don't feel dumb if you are somebody that you know i mean we graduated how long ago baby don't come for me no um but for real though some people you know don't even care to think about what angle is this what angle is that so more simply put just put the file the back of the file straight up against the free edge of the nail and file straight up and down 
and you're gonna get that crispy shape and as you can see i am having to go back over some of the nails and that is just because that's totally normal um you just want to make sure that you're looking at your client's nails from different angles like so and this is what will help you see if you need to take a certain side down if one of them is a little crooked one of them's not as straight whatever the case may be but you do for sure want to make sure that you're taking that extra minute just to look at the nails from different points of views and that is because as you just seen sometimes it is needed and you won't notice some things that need to be fixed until you do you know flip them nails and look at them from different angles so just keep that in mind and it'll help a lot in the long run and I'm also taking the time to file underneath the sides of the nails um, that's a super simple brief step you don't have to do too much in that it's just to clean up the undersides of the nails and that's super important because again when doing the fill-in sometimes especially for somebody like me that likes to press up against the sides of the nails when you're applying the acrylic to like keep that shape like I mentioned previously sometimes some acrylic can get underneath there and the you know just using the e-file just a, a whole bunch of different things can cause the undersides of the nails to just get a little jagged and that definitely is a no you want it to look nice and clean like we said so doing that will bring that nice clean underside back which will add a lot of quality to the set any little thing that you can do to add quality definitely do because your clients will appreciate it and you're going to be happy that you did because it just allows your nails to last so much longer look so much better and that's everything so um your clients are like your number one branding um technique if that's a proper way to say it like you can post all you want you can get business cards not saying any of that is pointless but your clients are going to be your walking billboards they are going to be the ones that especially if they're happy you want them to be as happy as can be because then they're gonna get the yap you know girls love to brag they're gonna be bragging on you go book my nail tag love my nails and girls always want to go to whoever's getting bragged on you know if that's what's trending oh my god so many people have posted her i want to go to her boom there you go even if a lot of people haven't posted you sometimes it just takes that one client one client can say look at my nails and then you know her cousin and her cousin's sister want to book and then her cousin's sister's best friend wants to book it's just a domino effect sometimes it just takes that one client y'all to get your books booming and full so you know make sure that you are putting out as best to work as you can because that is your advertising right there so now I'm taking my same that same 180 sanding band and I'm just going ahead and sealing the cuticles. This is just as simple as taking the sanding band and going from side to side around the cuticle area, making sure that it is nice and flat, nice and flush. Again, you don't want to get too close to the cuticle because when using a you know a carbide drill bit, which is like the metal ceramic looking ones. Or even using this one you can cut your client you can burn your client either way it's uncomfortable so you do just want to make sure that you are being mindful of that i also like to file um the free edge of the nail again like how i'm doing here like i said in the beginning of the video i do like to do that to bring the shape back but i like to do it a little bit before and then a little bit after just because i feel like doing it all before obviously would be pointless considering we're about to add acrylic on and doing it all after it just you know i already had it out in the beginning so i might as well just save some time rather than trying to focus all on it now i did some before and then just cleaned it back up after so to each his own but that's just what i like to do and then i do like to go ahead and just file over the entire nail left to right right to left whichever way you want to do it but making sure that you are filing the entire nail to ensure that everything is nice and smooth and flat especially with fill-ins um, sometimes you know when you're adding that acrylic to the cuticle area somebody like me okay I don't work over other nail techs work so I don't have this problem but you might be one which no problem at all but um, the reason I'm even bringing this up sorry I'll just scratch my chair <laughs> um, is because when you go to add that new acrylic sometimes it can look a little weird going over top of that old acrylic so sometimes it needs to be flattened out sometimes you might have put a little bit too much acrylic sometimes you know your brush could have did a little did a little slip up on you and now you got some a little ridge bump whatever my point being this is going to flatten out and make everything nice and neat you don't want to apply any pressure for real 
you want to make sure that you are keeping the file moving because if you keep the file in one spot for too long it'll cause friction that is going to burn it's going to give your clients a really hot burning sensation it's not comfortable it ain't fun so make sure that you're keeping that file moving and make sure that the speed is not too high so once you have all of that done you just take your buffer and these you can find these little bitty ones off amazon for super cheap i love them you don't need them big buffers especially since you need to replace them after every client this little one will do um and i just use one side for one hand the other side for the other and you simply just buff the nail cuticle to free edge left to right just buff the entire nail and then i have my clients i apply cuticle oil all around their fingers and then i have them go and wash with soap so yeah okay so she came back and she dried them um like dried them off and i like to take a little lint-free wipe with acetone and wipe over the entire nail just to make sure that no residue is left on there nothing from the paper towels was left on there boom now we're about to get the french in so I went ahead and just poured some white polish over on the top of my acrylic lid. I probably should get a little glass plate, but like, is it making a difference? No, because this French tip is still getting done. So anyways, as y'all can see, um, since these are short, we're doing like a little cute, thin, classy French. It really just depends on what your client wants. Sometimes people still want the deep French with the shorty. Sometimes they want just the old fashioned little line looking one. It really just depends. So always check with your client. But in this case, we're just doing like the simple, cute, classy, original French. And um, y'all, don't worry. If French tip is your struggle right now or has been a struggle for you, please do not worry because you all, you will come out in the light. Okay? You will see the sun eventually. Um, I have been doing nails for five years. Well, about to be five years. And I feel like I just got comfortable with French. And still, sometimes it makes me want to give pull my hair out and give myself a bald spot. It's just not an easy design. It's simple, yes, but it's not easy at all. So give yourself some grace and the biggest tip is to practice don't be afraid don't be scared don't let it intimidate you i used to hate french tips so much that i used to try to convince my clients to switch their design so i just had to take it by take it by the reins and practice 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 and i got there so yeah don't be afraid so i'm gonna um try to make it as simple as possible french tip like i said it is simple but it's just all it's just all the process so i like to go ahead and start by outlining the sides of the nail as you can see here and this just kind of helps guide me to keep an idea of how high and how angled i want the french to be if that makes sense so um like i said since we're keeping it on a lower side i am starting with the lines on the side super low that way i know it kind of just helps guide um how deep i want the french so i went ahead and just started to swoop the sides and connect the polish like connect the sides connect the swoop y'all see how it sounds confusing you kind of just gotta watch and and be like oh yeah i get what she's saying <laughs> so i just you know start to I think the biggest tip that I can give or like what helps me a lot is rather than like go ahead and create a full blown loop, I kind of start by just like filling in the corners of the nail, if that makes sense, as you can see. So I'm kind of just like connecting it and working my way out away from the corners and then just cleaning up that U. So it's really just in the motion um and everybody's going to have a different way of doing it so i think the best way is just to watch and to practice there really is no guaranteed if you do this this is going to be absolutely perfect i see so many different ways to do it like some people draw like a line in the center of the nail like where they want the french to, like to be and then they go ahead and just connect you know two lines connecting that some people do the little cross triangle method it really just is what works for you this is what works for me whether i'm doing short long whatever outlining the sides and as you can see like i said kind of filling in that corner this is with short um which with long or medium whatever obviously the corner is going to be way at the bottom but 
that's a different story. I have videos of that on my page if you want to kind of see how I do those. But all in all, it's the same method. But as you can see, I was kind of just dragging it, kind of filling in that corner. And then once I feel like I filled it in evenly on both sides, and once that French is connected, I do just kind of go back in and clean up the the U, make sure that it's painted all the way to the sides and make sure that it's painted on the free edge. You do want to make sure that you don't have any missing spots. You don't want to have any gaps or polish missing. It'll just take away from the design. So just kind of be mindful of that when you're doing the French and make sure that, like I said, you brought the polish all the way to the sides and to the free edge because you don't want the little round the rounded part or the tip of the nail looking all janky you know so so after doing the i don't know why i just had a brain for it so after you do the french you do just want to make sure that before curing you wipe the undersides of the nail to get like any excess polish off because this is gel and it's pretty thick sometimes it does like to kind of seep over and drip off especially with white um so just make sure that you're wiping the undersides of the nail to regain that shape and if you need to wipe underneath the free edge of the nail and once everything looks nice and good then you just go ahead and cure i like to do 60 seconds sometimes another round of 30 kind of just depends on how i feel like they look when they come out but once you do that and they're completely dry you just want to go ahead and top coat and repeat the wiping the sides um step I do that anytime I do any type of polish because like I said, you just really want to make sure that you're keeping that nice shape. And once you have them top coated, this is a little hack I'm going to let y'all know. So don't tell anybody, but if you want your French tips to look super crispy, you can take that file. Once they're completely top coated and done, you can take your file and just file the free edge straight up and down again. And this is just super brief. You don't want to like go ham we're not trying to shorten the nails again we're just trying to clean up that sh the free edge it'll make it look so crisp and clean which you'll see at the end of this tutorial so i'm gonna go ahead and head out and let y'all finish watching the little bit that's left but stick around to the end so you can see the finished result they're super cute super classy original french tips so i hope y'all enjoyed this video make sure to comment like and subscribe once we reach a thousand subscribers i am going to do a subscriber giveaway so not sure what or when i just know once we get that a thousand i'm going to be working on that for y'all so it's definitely gonna be worth it make sure that you're posting any comments that y'all want to see me do um or try i do have some exciting videos some new refreshing content coming for y'all that i'm super excited about it's gonna be new to the channel y'all so yeah I love y'all and thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.